Week seven. Um, this is week seven. We start. We officially start week seven. This is the first lecture of the week seven, and let's take a look at the syllabus, guys. Um, we are here. I mean, that's where we should be. However, uh, in the previous years, we had the midterm in the previous week. So to catch up with that schedule, we are going to uh, be speeding up a bit and we are going to cover these this week. So we're going to finish these. Uh, this lab subject might change because uh, Aaron changes lab subjects every year so that you can you perform different things in the labs. So we are going to cover this, and next week we are going to cover this. And we'll start with GPIO the next uh, week. So this is not the midterm week. We are going to be doing GPIO and interrupts. After that, in week 11, we'll have the midterm. You know this. And after the midterm, we'll have three weeks. We are go going to cover these. OK, so clear. We were talking already talking about pointers. So we, are, we will continue talking about pointers. Then. Sorry, let me check if I'm recording. Yes, uh, we'll talk about uh, arrays. The arrays is the good old arrays, list of information. And as promised, we are going to uh, finalize our talks on global variables. We are going to create global variables in the memory. Because what is a global variable? I mean, you need values to do operations, like int a, int b. Up to now, in our assembly language, we have been doing these operations on registers, which we call the scratch paper registers. However, we may need global variables, which everybody can reach. They exist in the memory. So we are going to create global variables in the memory and we'll keep their address values. Their address information will be their name. Actually, that's the same for high level languages and you're going to talk about these. Okay, so pointers, you remember this slide, it's a previous week's slide, so let me just take it here. So in a code piece like this, we know that R2 was a pointer. How do I know this? Well, because the next line of code, in the next line of code in 57, R2 is being used in a square bracket, which is called an index addressing, okay? If I haven't seen this code, by judging by only this line of code, 56, by only judging with 56, imagine I don't see this one. Just let me just hide it. I wouldn't know if it was a pointer or not. Since it's being used in an address ad index addressing to point somewhere in the memory, I know it's a pointer. And pointers are, uh, I mean, a global concept in programming. And in, programming lang in a programming language, the pointer is an object that stores the memory address of a value, of a variable in the computer memory. A pointer reference is a location in memory and obtaining the value stored at a location is no, uh, known as dereferencing the pointer. So if you dereference the pointer, it means go to the, that position, read the value and access it. So we know that R2 have address data because somebody who has written this code decided it to be that way. And we that's why we have defined R2 to be a pointer. So it is not like um, when you put this value in R2, R2 changes. No, R2 is still a hotel room with 32-bit values in it. So is this 32-bit value an address value? Well, that's how we interpret the code. I know that it's an address value, it's a pointer because I'm using it in an address ad index addressing mode. So it's us that knows R2's values and address or data. R2 is still just another register. But since we know that it carries address data, we call it pointer. That was the idea. I hope it's much clearer right now. So guys, um, this, uh, this is a figure I've taken from Valvano's webpage. It's, it's a very nice uh, presentation. It, it is similar to the bank notation, memory bank notation we use. So in some part of the memory, we have many cells. And each cell, as you know, is 8 bits. So may maybe we should remind those to you with my terrible writing. So guys, the word length is 8 bits. And this is a cell. So inside each cell, there's an 8-bit value. So let's say I have got written A here, which is an 8-bit value because two nibbles, 4 plus 4, 8 bits. And 
R0 has a 32 bit value because it's a register. So it is something, sorry. So it is, it is like a 32 bit value and it's pointing to that location. So the address of this location is this value. So if I want to get the value inside here to R0, what I do is I use this pointer to point that location with an instruction. And since, as you remember, this instruction is 32 bits, which is four bytes, I take four cells, starting with this location, four cells, starting with this location, and I read the numbers here. And inside this number, I have just let me use black, maybe it will be more helpful to us. And because of the little andianness, the lowest address will go to the least significant part. So it is A, A, B, B, C, C, D, D as a value because this is a 32 bit uh, instruction. Okay, uh, I guess it's clear. And um, any questions? I mean, if you don't have any questions, at least tell me you don't have any questions because I haven't heard any of your voice. It started to feel like a bit alone here. You're there, right? Yok hocam, sorumuz. Somebody answer. Hocam, Can you hear sesim? me? Hello. Guys, can you hear me? I'm going to think that I'm doing this on my own. Hocam, mu hocam? Hello? Ses yok mu hocam? Arkadaşlar, Uca'ya mesaj attım. <gülüyor> Yağdırın mesajları. Aa, gelmiyor mu? Ha. Ben Ulan onu Uca'ya yanlış mı yazdınız? Bir sorun var demek. Teşekkür ederim. Uzman kaynatma. Ses ayarlarımızı bir değiştirelim. Şimdi birisi konuşabilir mi? Hocam, hocam. ses geliyor mu hocam? Okay. Bir saniye. Ses ayarlarımızı değiştirelim. Arkadaşlar. Hocam. Ha, şimdi ses geldi. Çok teşekkür ediyorum arkadaşlar. Uyarılarınız ve chat'teki şeyler için, uyarılar için, yardımınız için. Okay, I think you've heard me up to now. Thank you. Um, uh, so uh, this is what a pointer is, and that's how you use it in the memory. And this is very simple index addressing and the operation of dereferencing. That's th this word is being used for programming languages. So you've got a memory location, a pointer. You want to get the value there, access the value there. That's called dereferencing. And the opposite operation is you've got a value. You need the address of it. It's called referencing. So pointers, referencing, and dereferencing. Okay. So guys. You might have realized that previously when we were using stack, we had the stack pointer. So to be able to um, operationalize this concept of stack, which is a data structure, we needed a pointer. Actually, if you ever take a course on uh, data structures, you will learn that in order to operationalize, realize a data structure, any type of data structure, you will need pointers because data structures are creating structured data in a memory by using various pointers. For example, one example was stack. By only stack pointer, which you just move each time you push or pop, you can implement this concept of stack, right? You know how to do it. Or there are more complex data structures as well. We are not going, going to cover these in this course, like linked list or FIFO queue, because there are advanced concepts. You can do this in assembly language, but we won't. First, we should learn what a linked list is. A linked list is you have a complex data structure, which are linked to each other. So how do you li link different data structures? So one data, then another data, and, and it, it's like an array, but uh, it is an array which size of which you don't know. It can be increased, decreased. It's a complex array type. Well, this is beyond the context of this course, so don't mind. If you want to learn about these things, get a data structures course 
from computer engineering. However, we are going to cover another simple data structure as well, which are arrays. You'll remember arrays. Arrays are fixed length, um, uh, fixed length uh, uh, data. I mean, fixed length size vector of data. I should use the word vector. So you've got a type of data like an integer. If you have 10 integers, it's an array of integers. The thing about arrays is, maybe you didn't learn when you learned arrays, they reside sequentially in the memory. So if you have a 10 integer array, those 10 integers are adjacent in the memory, just like it is shown here, the first one, the second one. So it is like the memory bank. And to designate an array, you keep the first values pointer. So it starts from here. Okay, so this is the array, we are going to cover it. So uh, let's make the definitions on, on arrays and I'm going to go to the implementational details of arrays and we're going to cover it. So array is a data structure consisting of a collection of elements, each identified by at least one array index or key. So you've got a collection of elements in the memory, which is identified by an array index. So this is the first element, the second element, that array index is the number of elements, that the index of the element in the array. An array is stored such that the position of each element can be computed from index tuple by a mathematical formula. Maybe you don't get this exactly, but we are going to learn this. I mean, what this sentence trying to say is, well, you have 10 elements in the array. You want to access exactly one of them, the fifth element, for example. So you only know the starting position of the array. So how am I going to jump there? Since they are fixed size, and since they are adjacent, you can simply make a big jump using that number five because you're looking for the fifth element and you can exactly reach that location. So exactly by, in order to exactly reach that location, you need two things. The index of that element you, you are trying to reach, the fifth element, five, and the starting point. So if you have a simple formula that relates there, you can immediately jump there. So that's the thing about arrays you can immediately reach, reach them. It wasn't the case for stack, you remember? If you want to access one of the variables which were pushed previously, first you had to pop the ones that were pushed more recently. That's why it's called first, uh, less than first out. However, in arrays, you don't have to do this. You can just access any of them anytime you want. I mean, you want to access this one, access it. You want just after that, you want to access this one, whatever, access it. Because I have the starting formula, I know that they are fixed length and they're adjacent. So in the memory, I can't find my way. That's the good thing about arrays. The simplest type of data structures is a linear array, which is this one. Linear array is one dimensional array. That's what we will be implementing, guys. There are more complex types of arrays. And then there are linked lists and five FAQs, blah, blah, in data structures literature. We won't go over these we will have this linear type of arrays, which are, we have fixed um, sized elements of the same size. They are put, ad in a two, uh, put to ad adjacent cells in the memory so that you can reach any of them any way you want. Okay. So guys, a linear array have these properties. It is random access. That was, that was what I was trying to say. You can access any element anytime you want. So you want to access one of the arrays, access it. It's sequential access. They are listed sequentially in the memory. That's important, okay. So when you reach one of this, actually you know that this one is some cells ahead of you. And they are equal precision. Each element is of the same size. So if in your array, uh, each element is eight bits, then you cannot have a 16-bit element. The thing about arrays is linear arrays is each element is of the same size. So the array length is the number of elements. Okay, if you have 10 elements in the array, that will designate how much space that you take in the memory, right? Because each cell is, for example, eight bits. You have 10 elements, eight, uh, eight bits is a single cell in your memory in the card that you use. So if you have 10 elements, 
you will be occupying adjacent ten elements. So the array length is correlated with the number of elements. And we always keep the origin, which is the index of the first element. So an array will be uh, represented by the starting address, which is the index of the first element. Okay, these are the definitions of arrays. How can I implement it? How can I implement it? Let's do it. So for example, this is the memory, okay? And in the memory, let me just get my perfect pen and my writing. So remember, in our uh, system, each cell is eight bits, right? This is called the precision or word length, okay? Each cell is eight bits. Well, the size of each element in the array is something that you decide. Well, I don't know what you need. For some purpose, you need an array in your code. You're, you're writing a code. That code was meant to do something. I don't know what. And at some point, you needed to create an array. Imagine we want to create an array of size, say, 16 bits. So 16 bits, this will be what we were seeing in this example, which is two bytes. So for some reason, you want to keep variables of two bytes. In our memory, our cells are eight bits, guys. So you will need two eight bit, two cells to represent each element of this array. So in your case, for this example, which is a 16 bit array, you'll need two cells for each element, right? So this will be the first element. We also call it the zeroth element. This one will be the first element. You might have realized that unlike MATLAB, all other languages, programming languages, starts their arrays, C and Python, from zero. Actually, we'll do this in assembly as well. That's the correct notation for computer engineering. The only exception is MATLAB. So if you have an array, the first element is the zeroth element. And this will be the second element. So I just said one, but maybe we should change this to zero or one or two. They are listed in the memory like this. So what I'm trying to say when I say they are listed in the memory in an adjacent manner is, so imagine this is 20 million in the memory. Next one is 20 million one in the memory. Okay, 20 million two, 20 million three, 20 million four, 20 million five. As you can see, the second element is in these locations and third element is in these locations. So they're just, this is the memory, data memory. Okay, any questions about not this notation? I guess not, right? Any questions? Okay, uh, simple as that. But as you might have realized, this was an example for 16 bits. If I change it to eight bits or 32 bits, this will change. And we are going to cover these examples. For, exa uh, for example, uh, well, we, we should remember what memory was. Actually, we did in the previous slide, but this slide is trying to remind us that uh, our um, the organization of an array in the memory is related to the or, uh, original organization of the memory. I mean, our memory's characteristic is that each cell is eight bits, but this may not be the case. For another memory organization, this could be different. But for ARM and for uh, uh, Cortex processors, the memory has eight bit cells, each represented by a 32 bit number. You remember this. So the memory is composed of eight bit parts, two nibbles, two hexes. And each, each eight bit part has a distinct memory address, which is 32 bit. So each adjacent cell address carry eight bits values, something that we already know, already said in the previous slide. So we continue, this is the data memory. And the instructions are here, remember? The registers are here. That's the arithmetic logic unit. And this is GPIO general purpose input output, which we are going to learn in week uh, nine, 11, 10, whatever. So this is the address value, which is 32 bits. 
sorry. And the values inside each cell is eight bits. Never forget this. This is something, uh, I mean, easily confused for students, but this is the characteristic of our memory. Our memory cells are eight bits. However, the memory addresses to represent those eight bits are 32 bits. What was the analogy we used? We have hotel rooms. The rooms were small. They only could keep eight bit residents. However, the hotel room number on the door was 32 bits. Okay, so if you create an array of 32 bits, which means each element in your array will have, that element will require 32 bits in the memory. You will need four memory locations for each element then, because each memory location is eight bits, one, one byte. So you're creating a four byte element array. So, Keep in mind that if imagine you, you start your array from here. So this is the starting location of your array, right? So this is the starting location of your array. This is the starting location. So the first element will be this, right? The second element will be somewhere here, right? So in order to reach the second element, you get to come here. Since this is a 32-bit element array, to get to the nth element, you always have to jump four memory locations. So how this, this was the zero of the element. Imagine I'm trying to reach the first element. In that case, I'm going to jump four places plus this starting pointer. So it's four plus four P, the pointer is the starting, the pointer that points to this array. This will give me the first element. Or if I just split this, if I jump eight positions, this will give me the second element. So there is a formula to reach exactly which element. That formula is something you will keep, guys. And we are going to do examples on those. Okay. Okay, so let's make an example, very simple example. For example, we I'll, I'll get back to the example where I had um, 16-bit elements, so the array is a 16-bit array. Precision is 16-bit, guys, okay? Since it's 16-bit, I have two cells, okay? PT is the start of the array, start of array. And imagine that that's the, this number. So if it is this number, I should be writing, if this is the data memory, so it is, yes, 0, 500. So the next location is 0, 0,501, 0, 0,502, sorry. Let me just make a straight line, which is something difficult for me. It goes on like this. So um, imagine I want to reach the first element in the address. Well, you can read a value from the memory to a register, right? How do you do that? Using load register uh, instructions. So I point R0 to this array, it's pointing to here. And I read the value that is pointed with R0 to R1. Any problems with this line of code? Anybody wants to share any problems with this line of code? İkinciye STR yazmamız gerekmiyor mu? STR is... Aşağıya hocam. This one we are, right? Evet. We are trying to read from the memory to the registers. STR will write from the registers to the memory. So guys, be careful. Maybe I should just remember this. This is the register bank. Right? This is the memory. Memory. STR is this way. LDR is this way. Okay? Answer to your question. So, uh, well, your guess was not correct. There is something wrong with this code. That is not it. I'm going to give you some clues, guys. Any questions? Hocam, LDRH mi olmalı? Exactly. Your friend is saying that it should be LDRH. Why? Please explain it to us. I couldn't hear you. Can't it olduğu için. Exactly. Very good guess. Your friend is saying that since we are using 16-bit arrays, we want to read only the first elements. 
but LDR is a 32-bit instruction. So what happens if we don't use LDRH? Imagine this code stays. What is it going to do? Let's see what is it going to do. Let's clear my drive. Bu ne ya? Niye silmiyor abi bu? Allah Allah. Ha, okay. Ha, pardon ya, şeyle çizim silmiş. <gülüyor> pardon arkadaşlar, bunu ben... E, neyse, boş ver. Bu slide de bu kaldı. E, okay. E, let me uh, just get back to what we were doing. So imagine this is not LDRH. It stays at LDR. What is the, uh, the wrong thing with it? It's going to read an address value starting with this place. But since LDR is a 32-bit operation, which is four bytes, which means four cells, it's going to read all the cells here. So it's not going to read only this number, but this number as well. But I don't want to. I just need to get this number only. That's why this should have been LDRH. So guys, your definition of precision of the array will designate which type of instruction you use as well. So that's a design issue. Okay, thank you for the answer. I don't know how to just delete this. Anyways, um, okay, so no, LDR is for, for 32 bit operations. The array is 60 bits, we must use LDRH. Blah, blah. We had in the next slide. Okay, see if you do this like this, what is going to happen is, let's imagine, let's put numbers there. Let's put numbers there. So if, so, so I'm just going to write numbers here. So um, imagine this is, yeah, well, some number, A, A, B, B, to make it simple, C, C, D, D. When you use LDRH to R1, so R1 will be, what will be R1? Can anybody tell me? When I do this operation, this is A, this is BB. What is R1 going to be? Remember, R1 is 32 bits. Does anybody want to tell me? A, A, B, B, C, C, D, D, If it was LDR, yes, LDR is 32 bit operations, but this is LDR H now. So oh, it's no a 16 bit. A, B, B, to which locations? Please remind us how Little Endian works. So I'll start by writing the first, the most significant bit. Tell me what most significant byte is, not bit. Zero, zero. Zero, zero. Then? Zero, zero. Thank you. Then? B, B, B, A, A. Any questions about this? This is true. This is LDRH. It will only transfer 16 bit of information. That's why it will keep these most significant bits zero. That's the definition of the instruction. Then you will get obeying the rules of little endian, the lowest address to the least significant byte, the next one to the next byte. Any questions? Simple. Ah, simple. I mean, clear, I guess. Fun, I mean, fun. So if it was eight bits, needless to say, this should have been B. I repeat, this is very important. If you're using arrays in your code, you designate the precision, the word length, not the word length, but precision of each element. So each element will be eight bits. You decide this. And if you decide it that way, to read only that value, you have to use the necessary instruction, which is compatible with that precision. So LDRB is eight bits, so you use eight bits. LDRH is 16 bits, you use 16 bits. And if you're using 32-bit operations, yes, then you can use LDR because it's going to read LDR. Okay, very good. Yeah. Eğer 8 bit olsaydı e, BBAA demiştik ya. Hı hı. E, o zaman 8 bitte de nasıl olacaktı RB değeri? Okay, let's give make an example uh, to make it more clear. I think you are asking something like imagine I've got uh, AA here, BB here and CC here. To make the example uh, more complex, I'm going to change this code a bit and I'm going to write a new code, LDR, R0, since, uh, so let's say that this location is 
500, 501, 502, 503, 504, 505, right? LDR is equal to 3. And I say LDR B, R1, R0. So as you can see, this is pointing to here, right? So this is pointing to here, right? So it's going to read the value here, the 8-bit value. So R1 will be, so you're asking a question like this, right? 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, A, A. Any questions? Evet. Okay, so this is the question that you ask. Anything more? Uh, aslında şeyi anlamamıştım. Um, yani öncekinde 16 bit dediği için mm -hmm. mi? E, alttaki satırı da aldık. Because it was LDR H. Evet, ama neden yan yana yazdık A, A ve B, B? Uh, Okay, let's remember how little endian worked. Imagine, uh, let's make another example. Let's say that this is LDR H. Okay? This is LDR H. Tamam. LDR H is a 16 bit operation. What does LDR H do? What does this line of code do? It goes to this pointer's address. This pointer is uh, 20 million uh, 53. It points to here, right? So starting with this location, I'm going to get some number of cells. How do I decide LDR H is 16 bits? That's why 16 bits is two bytes, which is two cells. So starting with this location, I'm going to get one, two cells. And I'm going to be writing it to R1, okay? R1 is 32 bits, so it's four cells. I'm trying to write two cells into a four cell. How does it work? Because of little endian, I make most significant bit byte zero, then obeying the laws of little endian. Little endian is the lowest address, which is 503, because I'm writing these cells to here. Lowest address to the lowest byte. So lowest address is AA, lowest byte. The next one to the next one. Okay, uh, we have these explanations in the previous week's uh, YouTube videos as well. So just, just take maybe just recap them. We've covered this, but this is also another example. Okay, any other questions? Good. I'm deleting a screen. Okay, so in another example, if you were having 32 bits, we had these, right? Good. So guys, uh, before we finish this, I'm going to be showing you another trick. I, I guess I don't have to go into detail of this stuff because I've got, I defined the array to be 32 bits. The array is 32 bits. And when the array is 32 bits, it means I have for each element, four cells in the memory. They are adjacent. And if they're adjacent, this is 20 million 500, 501, 502, 503, uh, 503. And this is 20, 20 million 504. So the next element, element two, or the zeroth element and the first element, it will start from 204. As you can see, there's something uh, going on here. This is the first zeroth element. So if I say plus four, this will be the fourth element. If I say plus eight, this will be the second element. Plus tw 12, this will be the third element. And it goes on like this. Why plus fours? Because I have is defined the precision, the size of each element to be 32 bits. Good, I mean, it was clear. Actually, there's an easy way for this in assembly language, which is actually, in order to reach the other elements, in index addressing mode, you can write an offset value inside the square bracket. So similar to this usage, this usage means only one thing. It's very, very simple, guys, very simple. So LDR, this, this line of code is 
go to where R0 shows. R0 is, show, R0 is this value. So if this is... R0 is pointing to here, right? This is pointer is equal to R0. So go to that location and read four cells. This is LDR, it's 32 bits, 32 bits. So this goes and reads these four, sorry, for these four values, right? So if you say this, it's quite simple. Go to where R0 shows, but count four cells more. Be careful, not four elements, because the size of the element might change. This is four, four cells, very important. This four is four cells, not this one. One, two, three, four. Now I'm actually pointing to here, guys. This is pointing to here. So by using this, I can access the next element. So imagine your precision is 32 bits or how many bytes, four bytes. Let's say P is equal to four. To get to the next element, you'll need a formula like LDR, R1, R0, P times four, right? To get to the next element. Because I make this eight, I'll get to the next element, which is somewhere around here. So this is the offset usage. We will be using this a lot because this is something easy to reach when you're dealing with arrays, okay? To reach the second element, or if you start counting from zero, the first element, by using the offset of four, we'll be reaching the one after the initial one. Why four? Because this is a 32-bit array. If it was designed by the coder, you guys, as a 16-bit array, this would have to increase two by two. Or, or if it's an 8-bit array, one by one. Any questions about the offset usage? I guess not. Simple. For an 8-bit array, the second element will be just one offset because one cell. This is one because the 8 array is 8-bit. And for 6-bit arrays, it's two. Increased by a factor of two because this array is 16 bits. So we are going to cover an example uh, in the next hour. And we are going to be doing coding. But I'm going to be doing a thought experiment, which is let's define 24-bit precision arrays. First of all, the question is, you have LDR, which is 32 bits. You have LDRH, you have 16 bits. You have LDRB, which is 8 bits. Do you have LDR something for 24 bits in assembly language? Does anybody know the answer? The answer is no, guys. So imagine I want to create an array whose elements are 24 bits. What I'm trying to say is in the memory, I have something like this. So imagine that's the memory. So this is where the array starts. So I'm going to be pointing my pointer to here. So these are the cells, each 38 uh, bits. Each element of my array, I want to be 24 bits, which means this will be the zeroth element. This will be the first element. This will be the second one, so zeroth, first, second. Okay. I designed this in the memory and I've got these values, A, A, B, B, sorry, B, D, let's say, C, C, E, E, F, F, uh, 9, 9. Please 
um, let's write a code to get the first element, the one after zero. Let's write a code to get the first element. What is the first element? It is this, right, guys? Any ideas how to read the first element? It's a trick question, but you might get, you may guess. So let me write another value here because we have a value here. One more. I don't have an LDR version of 24 bits. So how can I read this one? Any ideas? Let's say, let me just LDR look. H ve LDR B bir de kullanabiliriz hocam. We can, but how are you going to combine them? <laughs> okay, that, well, that was a start. That was a start. That was, or that was, that's a good idea. But maybe we could use LDR. Read what happens if you read LDR? What is the downside of reading LDR? Imagine, let me write a code. So this, let's say this is uh, 20 million hundred showing this location. So I'm going to write a code like this, guys, LDR r0 which will be my pointer which is the start location of the array okay and i'm going to read the next number so it's write it to r2 so r0 what am i going to write here i i want to read the one after the zeroth one any ideas which, which değil mi hocam? Three, exactly because this is a 24-bit array. So let's see, after this operation, what the value of R2 will be. Any guesses what the value of R2 will be? Any guesses after this operation, what is the value of R2 will be? Can, does anybody want to see, tell? Starting from the most significant byte. What the value will be? Exact. Sorry. Sıfırla mı başlayacak? Well, why would it? I mean, LDR is a 32-bit operation. It doesn't care about your definitions of 24-bit arrays or stuff. Because that's a definition you do. You have defined this array to be 24 bits. That was your problem. LDR is like a robot. It's not like a robot. It's a robot. It reads 32-bit operation. So whatever definition. It was, sorry? Uh, hocam, 11 ile başlıyor. Exactly. Ondan sonra 99 FF exactly. EE. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Exactly. This will be the value. However, that was not my goal. When I wanted to read this value, I needed this one to be zeros, right? I wanted to be zeros, but it didn't work like that. It is this. So maybe if I'm using 24-bit arrays in the memory, I need one more operation. What could it be? Imagine, imagine I already had something in R1 like this. So let me just um, imagine, imagine in R1, I had this. Imagine the value of R1 was this. Yeah, let's say, let's write the code for it. So let me write the code uh, more clearly, guys. So I'm just going to write it here. So do we have time? Yes, we have five minutes. Uh -huh. uh, so this is 200. This is the pointer. So this is the first value. I'm writing new values, guys. I forgot them. I know I have these values. And remember that this is a 24-bit array. So each element is 24 bits. So zeroed first. Okay, I'm writing a simple, very simple code, guys. So LDR, I'm going to define my uh, pointer first. So you don't have the dots in real uh, assembly code, but I'm doing this for you to just... And I'm going to define another one, guys. I'm going to be using this. This will be a surprise. 
you you know, uh, know what I do this. So LDR, R2, R0, 3, okay? Now, after this operation, what was the problem after this line of code? After this line of code, in R2, I had this. So starting from this location, I had, sorry, 1, 1, F, F, E, E, D, D, right? Because it will be reading these. Any questions about this? But this is not a value that I want to read. I need these to be zeros because I just want to read these three, these three values because that's the real number. So what I do is I do such a thing and R2 with R1. What is R1, guys? It is 0, 0, F, F, F. If you end this number with this number, so it was R2 here, R1 here. Fs are all ones, zeros are all zeros. So when you do end these, ending something with one will give you the same value. So and you do these, these will be zeros. And it R2, you will have the new value as 0, 0, F, F, E, E, D, D. This is called masking. I'm masking these bits, guys. So if you want to work with 24 bits, three bytes um, arrays, you don't have an instruction for it, but with additional instructions, you can implement it. Questions? That's a tricky question. That was a quick example. Any questions? Okay, then. Uh, small break. We'll continue it. 20 past 11. Mom, <laughs>